Hello, and welcome to Bay of Fundy Fortunes. My name is Natalie. I am an empath and an intuitive card reader, and I'm here this evening to do a general reading for the sign of Sagittarius for the month of July 2016. This is a general reading, so it may or may not resonate with you. If you find you like this reading and you'd like um, a, a private reading with me, I do, I do provide private readings, and the information that you would need to contact me is all found below in the description box right below this video and um, if you go to my site beneath the picture of Crow Island that you'll see there's a small paragraph and that entails all the details of how the private readings work for Bay of Fundy Fortunes. So um, if you um, also like to say thank you for all your likes and your shares and your your uh, visits and your views and if you haven't subscribed to the Bay of Fundy Fortunes yet please do. Uh, Every time I post a video after you subscribe, you'll be alerted via your email that I've done so. All right, so I've gone ahead and, and laid the cards out. I have five cards out. And for those of you that may be new, for the online readings, I use my Oceanic Tarot deck and my One Significator for the overall reading that I read at the end is from Tarot. Okay, so on with the reading. The very first card that I drew for you this evening is the Six of Wands, and it represents success. It brings brilliant success after hard work, and others will be drawn to your light. You may receive special attention for your work and an offer of love from a new romance proposal of marriage. The advice of this card, please don't hold back. This is your time to shine. You deserve this success. And the keywords are victory, education, awards, love, proposals, strength, and ceremony. What a great card to start your reading. This is the general feeling um, and vibration over the reading. Okay? So that's not bad. So the second card that I drew for you represents your um, work in finance. And it's a king of cups. And he's about understanding. He's a magnificent looking gentleman. I really like him a lot. Some of these cards are very beautiful. And the king has integrity, and he has honor and sensitivity, and he's devoted to his friends and his family and his career as well. Um, he's loyal for life, and sometimes he becomes distant. He feels everything very deeply, although he may not show it. This is the U card. The king indicates to have balance and empathy with others and fairness. He's the ideal male partner. The advice is to follow your emotions. No need no need to explain anything to anybody else nor your feelings. Trust that you are right. Keywords are fairness and empathy, sensitivity, loyalty, and home. It almost, the uh, spirit is, is, is um, saying that where this is the you card, you are going to be making some kind of purchase. And you feel that this is a practical needed item. And you feel very justified in this purchase. There may be, there may be some people in the family, maybe um, that wouldn't agree with you completely. Let's put it that way. Um, if you're a wife buying a new car, or a husband buying a new car, um, and a young adult child that's been saving to buy something, the other people, maybe your parents in the family. Um, won't agree, maybe your wife won't agree, maybe your husband won't agree, but there's something going on, somebody saying, are you sure you can afford this? Are you sure this is really, really, really what you want to spend your money on? And you're saying yes, because you have the integrity to stand behind any decisions that you make. So you may just have a bit of a, a kerfuffle on your hands with something new that you want to go spend some money on. All right, so the next card 
is in the third position of your love and your relationships, and that's relationships right across the board. It is the Five of Cups. You represent sadness. The keywords are unhappiness, dejection, negative thoughts, confusion and hurt, disruption and feelings of abandonment. The advice of this card is to look for and accept support. In the situation that you're in, it is not hopeless and you will heal. The five reveals sadness due to loss of a relationship or a job, friendships, maybe bereavement. The five reveals an unexpected break from a person, a job, leading you bereft and confused. Another meaning is you need to be able to let go of the past and you are haunted by guilt and regret. For some of you, spirit is telling me somebody's passed on, you've lost somebody. That's where the bereavement comes in. For some of you, this is separation and breakup. For some of you, this is disillusionment when you thought a relationship was a certain way and it wasn't at all. Um, for some of you, it's... There's a lot of sadness, but this is not a hopeless situation. When you're in the moment and when something as fresh like this has just hit you, be it through an unexpected death, be it through breakup of relationship. There's a very, very light nudge that somebody may have just lost somebody through suicide. And you're feeling completely confused and lost and you just don't understand it. And you can't wrap your head around it. This is a very sad card. But there's always hope. Even within this card, there is hope. And little by little, day by day, when we say we heal and time makes things better, well, when it comes to separation through death, and if we're deeply, deeply grieving and we've been bowled over by it and it's knocked the wind out of our sails of life, um, it can leave such, such a melting pot of emotions. There's anger, there's hurt, there's sadness, there's overwhelming grief, just pure, raw, grinding grief. And the one that, if, there, if, if someone is suffering from loss of someone they love through a suicide, there are feelings of guilt and regret. If I hadn't done this, if I had done that, and you go back and you go forth and you go forth and you go back, and it's not going to change the situation the only thing it's going to accomplish is tearing you apart. You, you're not responsible for what somebody else's hand has done to themselves. Time, will, time doesn't take the pain and grief away. What happens over time? This is, this is my own personal belief. That over time... You get better at dealing with the grief and, and holding it together when you need to hold yourself together. You get stronger in that, that way. You, you become, you become, you have a shield and you know when to, when to bring it down and to shut, to shut that part of you down that's grieving because grief is with you 24 seven. It doesn't take a break. It doesn't go away. Over time, you get better at controlling your emotions and your heartache. That's what time does. So in a sense, it's kind of a healing. The self-control is a healing. Because for those of you that don't under, understand grief through death, that have never really had anybody close to you pass on where you felt your whole soul was turned inside out. Um, imagine if you had somebody that the most important world, person in the world to you just went away. And they're somewhere on the planet, but you don't know where. And you don't know when they're coming back, if they're ever coming back. And every day that goes by, you don't miss them less. You miss them more. And more and more. That's how it is with grief. You don't stop missing them. At some point, you accept what has happened. But you're going to miss them more and more as time goes on. And your heart will ache. And you will pine for their presence. 
but you'll get better at, especially in public situations around other people, because when you're first grief-stricken, grief wall the washes people, they fall apart at the worst times and the worst places. It happens. But you'll get stronger and better. That's where the hope comes in. And the light will shine again. You will laugh again. You really will. You will laugh again. You will feel joy again. And the memory of this person will be bittersweet. For the rest of you on breakups, you'll get through it. Oh, you're not the first on the planet. You won't be the last. Someone's been betrayed and let down terribly. Somebody's been misled in a relationship. There's not so, there's, you know, there's people out there that aren't, that aren't. Not everybody has morals. There are people out there with questionable personalities and what they're all about. You will learn from this, you'll grow from this, and you'll be stronger. Your next card is your challenges. The challenges are the Ace of Swords that represent victory. The card, the keywords are beginnings and decisions, action, clarity, determination, solutions and ideas. Use your intelligence and victory is yours. The ace reveals that you will benefit from a smart decision that leads to immediate victory. If there has been any delays, the ace shows a break. If you're already in a relationship, one of your challenges is going to be is to spice things up a little bit if you're already in a relationship. Um, you can feel things are becoming maybe um, a little stale for some of you. For others, it's been you've been working, you've been working too much. You have to almost reinvent the pattern of your relationship, and you need to come up with new, exciting, and inventive ways to, excuse me, let the other person know just how much you, they mean to you. Because things are going to get old real quick. They're going to get stale. When things get old and stale, then boredom kicks in. And when boredom kicks in, the natural human response is to try to break that boredom. And how do we break the boredom? Is usually with um, other activities, other people, and whatnot. And what can happen in that situation, unless you're very, very strong and solid in your relationship, um, you're little slots of space start getting put in between. So if you're working too much and you're not around and your partner has slotted these different things to keep themselves busy and occupied and you know um, you can pull it off a few times saying well my plans have changed so let's go out tonight but they've already got something planned so they cancel it. Um, that'll only that'll only go for so long and the other person's going to start resenting it. And they are going to be thinking that you think that maybe there's an expectation they should be sitting around and waiting for you and drop everything at the drop of a hat because suddenly you're available. That's a bad way to be and that's a bad way to go. So you've got to get it really, really inventive. And um, your challenge is going to be trying to bring some life and excitement back into your relationships again. So yes, this is that's what this is about. It's the um, the challenges of creating something, of making this decision, starting new beginnings, then taking action, seeing the clarity of the situation, the determination, in the new ideas and solutions. You have to come up with something new, something that is going to to. Um, not following the same pattern you've been on, but create a brand new pattern where things are going to work for you. Use your intelligence. Be really smart about it. Really give it some, give it some deep thought. You will come up with something because you've made a really smart decision. And when 
you break that through and you, you apply it, you're going to see media victory because of it. It's going to work. Whatever that is, it's going to work like a charm. So this looks really good. Um, there are challenges, and you are going to find this a challenge because just making extra time in your life for your family, your children, your better half, the challenges when, when it seems like everything is all tied up in you, in your, it's like having a job, a demanding job, and um, it's, it's trying to fit and prioritize. Prioritizing things can be very, very, very challenging. In a perfect world, if it wasn't for us having to work for a, for a living, keep a roof over our heads, we'd have all kinds of time. But, it, you know, when you're working full time, and you're out there in the world, um, these things become challenging. There's n there's no getting around it. They they become um, a problem, not not with resentment, but um, you've got to be really 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 smart to come up with a way to. To fit this all in together so that everybody's happy. You're probably even going to give yourself some headaches about this is um, the sense that I'm getting. These problems will give you headaches but you're smart, you're intelligent, and this is where you need to use your intelligence. Create a new pattern in your life with those that, that um, are meant to be. Make sure that they're, they're, um, they're a priority and let them know that they are a priority. That's really important. They need to feel special. Otherwise, they feel like there's going to be times that um, you, may for, you may forget all about them. That's what they're afraid of. So the last card is a message from Spirit. And it is Page of Wands. It's about creativity. Here we go. See, with this, the challenges and the relationships and trying to make everybody feel happy and important, you're going to have to get very, very, very creative message from Spirit. Page is charming and witty and brings great news about creative projects, travel plans, and new work. One can now discover new talents in the arts. The advice is, now is the time for self-expression, thoughts, words, keywords or messages, travel, news, communication, new work, expressionism, transition, and entertainment. So this is from Spirit. And spirits throwing in some ideas there that maybe um, maybe once a month you take your mate and you both join some kind of a group or some kind of workshop and this is something that is already pre-planned every month in advance so that can't separate you and somebody else the other person can't say like well I had a plan for that night well no you couldn't have because we've got little check marks on the calendar for you know two or three times a month we go and do this workshop thing that we both love so much. So nothing will interfere with that. That's what I mean by intelligent decisions and trying to put things together to make people feel like they're a priority. So you put that out there. So we've done this and we're going to do this three times a month. Um, when I'm home on weekends, when I have an evening or two off, we will do this. And, and it's definite. It's right marked on the calendar. It shows the person you are, you are, you hold them in priority in your life. Because this day will be for them. This evening is for them. This weekend is just for them. And you're looking forward to it. And it's going to be a repetitive thing. So that you're doing this all the time. That's one way to prioritize people in your life for, you, for your better half. So, um, whatever it is that you're going to get into, it will involve the arts. And it will be entertaining. These will be times out and away from home, time spent together. And it could be this, it could be a young person. The page usually represents a young person, children or young adults. And this person is going to probably feed you some new ideas. And they are the deliverer, mostly always of messengers. So there's, it looks like a, um, a young Probably a young a young man, 
not saying that it couldn't be a young female as well. There's a connection there. And maybe actually this is, maybe this is the person you need to be spending time with. Maybe they're going to come up with some ideas as well. All right. So the significator card that I drew from Tarot. Uh, it's the first time I've had this guy. I'm like, I, I like to see some new cards coming up. Um, for those of you not familiar with the uh, tarot cards, uh, like I have two decks, which is nothing. I know some readers online have like 19 or 20 decks. They're all different. Um, they all have 78 cards in the deck. So you would think out of 78 cards, if I only draw three cards, if I only draw five, there'd be... Uh, all kinds of things popping, but I, I, when when spirit spirit is hungry to push a message through, I'll get the same card over and over and over to the point I am so bored with seeing it, and it's just because somebody's not getting the message that's watching the video, they're just not getting it. So the cards can be a little freaky, um, and this is a new one for me, and it's the King of Swords from this deck. He is magnificent looking. King of Swords. Let me get my book out for him. This is your significant, very significant to the reading. in the whole wrong suit all together. Just bear with me for one moment. Here he is. Similar to the King of Cups, the, the King of Swords carries an aura of intimidation. Both are silent and serious. By tradition, the King of Swords is an expert on law, politics, society, and communication. Wherever he is found, he exercises power. He is emotionally cold, as is the Queen. The King of Swords is happiest with a life of stimulating work, following high ideals. And for some of you that are tied up, as we were talking about, you know, it, it doesn't have to be a job or work-related. It could be something else entirely. Um, sometimes people volunteer. It takes up a huge part of their life. Um, sometimes people are taking care of um, their family members. That would take up a lot of your time. Um, because this is your reading, Sagittarius, you need to be stimulated all the time. You don't like being bored. You don't like not having anything to do. Everything you do needs to have a common sense factor behind it. It is the beginning, in the middle, and the end of everything. In the beginning, it's something that you want to try. And in the middle, it's something you're doing. And in the end, it's the end result. What's the point to it all? Whatever it is, it has to be stimulating. Something that, 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 that gets a little bit of a fire going under your feet so to speak. Um, so these are things, and this could be part of the problem, because you have this inner need to fill yourself before anybody else, to content yourself, to just be happy to be alive and get up every day and have a reason. And when you wake up and say, oh, yes, I've got this today, and your feet hit the floor running, and you're looking forward to it. And you, you, you really can't wait to start it or get there or whatever that is. And some of the family members are feeling a little slighted, a little left out, a little behind. So like I said, how to fix that. You start marking check marks on the calendar that are these that are special just for them. That you're going to put everything to the side and prioritize them. It sure takes a lot of the, the stress away and the feelings of rejection um, and being secondary choice in somebody's life that you have put first in your life. So this reprioritizes their place in your life. And that's a good thing. 
um, for others of you, as I was saying earlier, give yourself some time. Be kind to yourself. It's time to heal. It's time to heal. And the healing comes one second at a time, one moment at a time. There is no such thing as time. Time is a man-made creation. But as life blows through, you'll get stronger and you'll get better. And you will find joy and happiness again. Guaranteed promises. Promise. As long as you don't give up, you have to hold on. You may never have the answers that you seek. But you have to find a place within yourself to put, to put these places in your heart that you'll always hold there. That's it, my friends, dear Sag. That is your reading for July. A little bit here and a little bit there, a little up and a little down. If anything, it isn't. It's not boring. So all I have left to say to you is, I hope you have a really good July. I hope you enjoy it. I hope it enriches your life. I hope you come out at the other end of July a much more well-rounded, well-balanced, happier, solid, more grounded person. And I wish you the best. Good night.